Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve. Make sure to subscribe for more of that. Today we're talking about Nodes 101, a little series on how nodes work and all of the details I can think to explain about them. Mmm, tasty. By the way, if you like the way I explain things and you want to work through a project with me, take a look at this master training because we'll work through a project together from end to end, all the way from basic editing, through color, through compositing, through audio. It's a lot of fun. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get... Let's smack the freaking thing. <laughs> now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the nodes. Let's get to it. Shish slam. Today we're talking about merge nodes. So what the heck is a merge node? First of all, if you grab this icon right here next to the second divider in the toolbar, you grab it, drag it down here, that'll make a merge node. Let's talk about it, shall we? The point of this thing is to put one thing over another thing. It has three inputs to start out with. The first one, this yellow one is its background. The green one is the foreground and the blue one is the effect mask. So if you wanna put something over something else in Fusion, you connect whatever you want to be in your background to the background. So let's use this clip right here, which is our media in. I'll disconnect it from our media out and just connect it to our yellow input for our merge and connect our merge to the media out. So now this is in between the media in and media out. So now we have a green input here. This is where we can put something over something else. So let's say we have text, just grab one of these text nodes and I'll hit one on the keyboard because that'll make whatever node that we have selected show up in this left hand viewer. In the right hand viewer, we're seeing media out. We can tell by this little dot right here. But if I select the text node and go over to the inspector, I can type text. I'll just call this some um, text and I'll make it bigger, okay? This media out node is what whoever watches our movie is going to see. So right now there's just the background, the media in, because we haven't connected this text one to our merge, but we can take this output right here and drag it onto that green input. And now we have the text over our merge. Look at that. Nice, right? So that's some of the basics about how the merge works. That part is pretty simple. It's a background and a foreground. It may seem frustrating to add a merge node every time. Like any time that I want to put something over it, I got to grab this merge node and disconnect this and connect it like this and put a foreground over it. The good news is that it actually can go a lot faster than that. I was just showing you basically how it's connected. The first way that can go faster is if you have something selected and you go up and you click this button for merge, it'll add a merge node and connect it and everything. So that's pretty quick. You can also, if you have another node that you want to merge over something, you can actually take this output and drag it over the output of another node and that will automatically make a merge node and connect it to the foreground. So that saves you a ton of steps. And I find it honestly just as easy as, you know, dragging a new layer in. I guess it is technically one more step, but it's really fast and you get really used to it. So that's how you actually add a merge node. But this does more than just put something over something else. It actually controls the way that it acts once it's put over something else. So if I click on this merge node and go over to the inspector, we have all kinds of fancy controls here. And usually when you mess with controls in the inspector, it changes things about the actual node, right? But what this is doing is just changing the way that this foreground is merged over our background. So if we move the center, that'll move the foreground. Size, that'll size the foreground. Angle, angles the foreground, right? So we can size and position things with this merge node and we don't have to do something like add another transform node or change really anything about this text node. We can really have a lot of control over what something looks like just with the merge node. And we'll get into the advantage of that in just a second. Let's keep diving into this. We also have things like transparency modes. So you can set something to multiply, overlay, that kind of thing, which is great for textures and things like that. And we have a few more controls that I'd recommend playing with, but one of the main ones that you're gonna use is blend. Blend is like the opacity of the foreground node. So the more I go down on this blend, the more we see this is transparent, right? Those are really the main things that you're gonna use most of the time for a merge node. There's also these tabs up here in the inspector, which have a little bit more advanced options. One that you might use a little more often would be on the far right tab. There's a couple tick boxes here for playing with your mask and also motion blur. So let's talk about a mask for a second. If I go to my toolbar and grab a rectangle mask, I can connect the output of the rectangle mask to the blue input on the merge. And what that does is controls where things are merged over each other. It doesn't control what part of the text shows because if we look up in our left viewer, our text isn't being masked at all. When you mask on a node, you're basically telling Fusion to only do whatever that node does inside of the mask. So only merge things together inside of that mask. The advantage of that is you can move this rectangle mask around in our merge controls, 
when we move the text around or size it or anything, it still happens within that mask instead of sizing that mask, because that's what would happen if we connected this to the text. Anytime that we moved anything around in the merge controls, it wouldn't happen under the mask. It would move the mask with it. I'll connect this back, reset our merge controls and our mask. Then if I grab our merge and go over to the very right hand tab in the inspector, I can change the way this mask actually acts with the merge node. Instead of inverting the mask itself, I can just invert the mask in the merge node. So why do we care? Why does that matter? Well, let's say you want to do something fancy, like use the same text layer and the same mask to do two different things in a comp. We can set up our mask to do something fancy, like mask half of this, and we can make another merge node and connect our same text and our same rectangle mask, and we can control part of our text independently and have a little bit of control over the mask just with that merge node without changing our mask or our text. Merge nodes are a great way to duplicate a node without actually having to duplicate it, and you can do some really cool effects just by merging something over itself a couple of times. And because I have independent control over how this text shows up over our composition in each of these merge nodes, I can do stuff like change each one, and then when I go back and change our text, it updates on all of the different merge nodes. Pretty awesome. Another thing you might run into with merge nodes is if something doesn't show up how you think it would. For instance, if you don't have a background connected, nothing shows up. It looks like things should work because you have stuff connected, but it doesn't work because the merge will not show up unless there's a background. So you've got to connect a background to the merge. That's one thing. The other thing is sometimes it looks like this. You connect stuff together like it makes sense to you. And you're like, where's my foreground node? Where's my text? I bring up my text in the left viewer. Everything looks good. What, what, it, why, what is this? The problem is because these are color coded. It doesn't really matter where you connect things to a node. It matters which color you connect it to. Yellow is always the background of a merge and green is always the foreground of a merge. So you need to disconnect each one and connect media into the background and text to the foreground for it to show up. But that's a lot of work. And so a quick shortcut for that is control T. That switches the background and the foreground inputs on a merge node, super helpful. Another thing to remember about merge nodes is anytime that it merges something together, it's almost like it's making it a new piece of media, sort of. Like this together is kind of its own composition, right? And so anytime that you merge something together, it kind of becomes its own like image. That means that if you wanna do something like make a really complicated mask or something, like let's just mess with this for a second. I'm just gonna make a merge and connect it to another merge like this. And I'll grab some fast noise. If you don't know what all of this is, it's, it's really okay. I'm showing you kind of something else. Let's say you have something like this. That's a black and white mat of some kind that you have to combine a couple different things together to make a black and white image that all works together. You can do that by merging them. Fusion treats this as like one image, one piece of footage. And so if I want to do something like use this as a mat, let's say I want to put this like red background over our footage here but I only want it to appear where the white is, I can use this as a mat by connecting this to the mask controls of our merge, going to the third icon here in the inspector and under channel selecting luminance. And that will use this entire composition, the thing that's merged together as that mat rather than just one of these nodes. So that's a nice way to kind of combine things together. It's like the equivalent of pre-composing in After Effects or merging layers down in Photoshop or grouping layers, very similar. So one last thing, one, one point that got me when I first started compositing with Fusion is the fact that these merge nodes, you can only connect one foreground and one background. So what if you want to stack more things? Like I usually have more than two layers in a composition. Why the heck would they build it that way? Remember that a merge controls the way the foreground acts over a background. So this is really just controlling how this text appears over stuff. So when you want to put a new layer on top of something, let's say some noise, you just add another merge node. So now I'm controlling how this fast noise appears over this composition, the text over our background. It seems like it's really complicated, but once you work like this for a little bit, it makes a ton of sense. It's just like, oh, I need another layer. It would be a lot more confusing to connect the fast noise to a third input on a merge, if that existed, and then scroll through the inspector and try and figure out all of the controls for each one of those inputs, rather than just have them separate like this. And then you know exactly what you need to select and control.
But yeah, that's the basics of merge nodes. They put something over something else and control how it looks once it goes over there. There's a background, a foreground, an output, and a mask. If you want to merge a lot of things together, just add more merge nodes. There you go. That's the ins and outs of merge nodes. I hope that was helpful for you. If you want to learn all about other nodes, I'm making a playlist. Here it is. Hmm. We're going to learn all about all of the nodes. <laughs> hmm. Tasty. You hear the dogs barking? Very hard to record when that happens. <laughs>